What's up? My name is Technova here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. So recently, PUBG was announced to be going free to play. Everyone can get it on Steam currently. It's completely free and you can get the good old experience that PUBG used to offer. While the game's changed quite a bit over the past few years, something that hasn't changed is the need for more FPS. And that's exactly what I'll be showing you in this video here. I'll be running through an in-depth optimization guide of PUBG for 2022. And to keep the video nice and short, or as short as it can be, you'll find full Windows 10, Windows 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides in the description down below. This video is only going to lightly touch on Windows optimization. It'll mostly be about the game itself to keep from repeating myself. So just keep that in mind. If you'd like to squeeze even more out of your PC, do check the description down below. First of all, before we even begin with any optimization, optimization guide, make sure that your Windows is completely up to date and of course your graphics card driver as well. It's super simple and you'll find links to the download websites in the description down below, assuming you don't use something like GeForce Experience to update your graphics drivers. To begin, we'll be heading across to where the game is installed. For this, I'll open up Steam, search for PUBG, right click PUBG Battlegrounds, hover over Manage and then click Browse Local Files. The steps that you follow throughout this video also apply to Experimental Server and Test Server if you can play either of those nowadays. Inside of the game's files, open the TSL game folder here, then Binaries, Win64, and what we're looking for is tslgame.exe, the biggest file here. Right click this and click Properties. Inside of here, head across to the Compatibility tab at the very top and simply choose Disable Full Screen Optimizations. Then click Change High DPI Settings and tick this box at the bottom here. Choose Application, OK, Apply and OK. Right click the path at the very top and then choose Copy Address as Text. Hit Start and type in GPU where we'll be opening Graphics Settings. Now, of course, I'm showing you on Windows 10, but the steps for Windows 11 are practically the same. Make sure hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned on and under graphics performance preference, select desktop app and then click browse. Then click at the very top and hit control V to paste, then enter. Now we're inside of the same folder we were just in. Double click tslgame.exe and you should see TSL game appears on the list. Click options and then choose high performance and save. This way, we're forcing the game to use the best graphics card in your computer, which is especially important on gaming laptops and notebooks. Then click Home at the very top, and we'll head into the Gaming section. Inside of here, make sure that the Xbox Game Bar is turned off unless you specifically use any of these features. Then head across to the Game Mode section, and make sure that Game Mode is turned on. Finally, the Captures section over here used to have a toggle to turn this off. Effectively, this is Windows Shadow Plane, or AMD's equivalent of that. Basically, it records your screen the whole time and allows you to clip it, or of course, just record gameplay. While it is useful, if you don't specifically use it, you should make sure that this is turned off as it should give you better performance. To do so, hit Start and type in Xbox. We'll be opening up the Xbox Game Bar. Then at the very top, click the Settings wheel, head across to the Capturing section and make sure that Record in the background while I'm playing a game is turned off. Then you can close this window and click anywhere to close the Xbox Game Bar. Now that we're done with that, let's quickly get to cleaning up some temporary files left over on our computer to free up some drive space. If you're running a really low on drive space, it will cost you a lot of FPS and performance in Windows and Games. Hit Start and type in Clean, where we'll be opening Disk Cleanup as Administrator. Simply choose your Windows drive, which should be C. Click OK, wait for it to scan, and then inside of this window over here, you'll be able to tick everything on this list, as almost all of these are temporary files your computer doesn't need, except for maybe Recycle Bin, which you may want to leave unticked to go through and empty out yourself later, and Thumbnails down here if you work with a lot of images on Windows. I do tons of thumbnail work, etc. Loading thousands of previews for images is not something I do often, so I'll leave Recycle Bin off to go through manually and thumbnails down here. When you're happy, simply click OK and delete files. Now Windows is automatically cleaning up multiple folders, saving us tons of disk space. When it's done, if you have the game installed on a different drive, simply open up Disk Cleanup once again, and this time choose the drive that you have the game installed on. Click OK and repeat the steps. With that out of the way, let's make sure we have as little running as possible so that we can get the best performance in game with the most available resources. Hold Control Shift and press Escape to bring up the Task Manager. And inside of here, simply go through the list, closing whatever programs you don't need. Then head across to the Startup tab at the very top and sort by status. Everything listed as enabled starts up when your computer logs in. If you see something you don't necessarily need, right click it and click Disable. 
That way you can manually open it later on. If you're a power user, you can head across to the services tab at the very top, then click open services. Inside of here, you're able to sort by startup type and everything listed as automatic starts up when your computer starts up. If you see something you don't need, double click on it and simply choose startup type manual, okay, and it shouldn't boot with your computer anymore. When a program needs it or you, it'll simply open up the service automatically. That way we have as many resources available as possible. Speaking of resources, something that can cause a lot of input latency, FPS drops, and of course more resources to be taken are overlays, such as Discord overlay, Steam overlay, etc. For me personally, the Discord overlay always causes me to have higher input latency and sometimes drop FPS in specific games. Hence, I have it off for every game that I play just to get the best experience. If you're fine playing without overlays, you should try turning them off for a free FPS boost. On top of this, if you're playing a game and your graphics card is completely maxed out, you can try and disable hardware acceleration in programs like Steam, Discord, etc., which causes them to use more of your CPU instead of your GPU, leaving more of your GPU available for GPU limited games. And finally, with all of that out of the way, let's head across to Steam, select PUBG Battlegrounds, right click and click Properties, and head across to the General tab where we can enter some launch options. Now, while there are a lot of snake oil options, some of the best options that I've found are these over here. You'll find them in the description down below. Use all available cores, SM4, No Splash, and Matt Alias Zero. Some other options I've heard of include hyphen low memory, which you can use if you have a small amount of RAM on your computer, such as eight gigabytes. If you don't, however, struggle with low RAM, you can leave that out. Now you can close out of the settings window here and fire up the actual game itself. Once again, if you'd like more optimization for Windows, do check the description down below for both Windows and Nvidia optimization guides as well as other related content. When you eventually get to the main menu, click the settings wheel in the very top right, then settings, and on the graphics tab, we'll start by adjusting some settings. Obviously, language is what you like, and NVIDIA highlights is whether you want highlights or not. If you have this running, NVENC shouldn't take too much performance away from your computer though it may on really old graphics cards. Where we'll really start to gain performance is starting with display settings over here. First of all, make sure that display mode is set to full screen for the best possible FPS. And the resolution over here should be a supported resolution of your monitor. Meaning if your monitor is 1080p, set it to 1080 here, 2K, ultra wide, etc. Set it to whatever matches your display, or of course is an officially supported resolution. That way the game won't be blurry and things will still look good. If you'd like to get extra FPS by lowering the resolution, instead of doing it here, what you need to do is use something like NVIDIA's NIS or AMD's RSR. If you'd like to learn more about NVIDIA NIS, NVIDIA Image Scaling, check the description down below for a video on that. Lobby FPS cap isn't really important. You can enable this and cap it to say 30 if you'd like the game to take less performance while it's running in the background while you're searching for a game tabbed out on YouTube for example. The in-game FPS cap should be set to unlimited unless your graphics card is pinned to 100% and you're trying to, say, record the game. OBS isn't running very well. In that case, you can limit the FPS or for other specific situations. That option's here, but what you should do is leave it on unlimited or at least display-based. Smooth frame rate should be turned off as there is a specific vSync option later on if you're receiving screen tearing. Brightness is your user preference. Universal brightness for all maps is an option that you may wanna mess around with, though this is user preference. If you turn it off, you can change the brightness for all of the different maps in PUBG. For me though, I just leave this on enable so that all of the maps use the same brightness setting as up here. Scrolling down to advanced settings, we have a bunch of options that'll help us get FPS. Instead of using the render scale option, over here, instead use something like NVIDIA NIS or RSR. If you don't have access to any of those, you can lower the render resolution here to render the game at a lower resolution and scale it up to be full screen. Don't note that pushing this below 100% will result in a blurry game and above it'll take away extra performance just because you're rendering bigger and shrinking it down. FPP camera field of view is the first person camera field of view and of course you can set this to whatever you like. The higher that this is, the more FPS you'll be losing while you're playing the game, though of course it's completely user preference and really depends on your playstyle. The overall graphics quality, you can mess around with these settings here to get a general idea of what kind of FPS you get on each of these settings as everyone's computer is different. 
Once you do change this, you'll notice that there is no custom option. Don't worry, as soon as we change any of these other settings here, we'll get that custom setting back. Now, much like games with a good UI, this one here has a good example of what exactly each setting does. And of course, as you adjust it, the image on the right hand side of the setting will adjust with you. And the aliasing should be set to very low unless you absolutely hate jagged edges, in which case you can turn this up to low or even medium. Going any higher, you don't really notice any change, but it will take away quite a bit of performance. For me, I set this to very low. Post-processing, you should turn all the way down for better performance in game as it only really has to do with lighting. And as you can see between low and very low, a lot of shadows disappear, giving you better visibility. Shadows at the very bottom are of course quite important as they may hide people away. The lower you push this option, the brighter the overall scene gets and the easier it should be to see people. And not to mention, you're not exactly gonna be staring at shadows while you're playing a Twitch shooter. So turning this down very low is a no-brainer. Textures over here really depends on the amount of VRAM your graphics card has. If you have a mid to high-end graphics card, you can leave this on medium, otherwise turn this down to low or even very low. You will notice a major change between low and very low. It seems like the very low option here is pretty much mobile processors and laptop specific. If you hate the way that it looks, set it to low and leave it there. Of course, pushing it any higher only slightly improves the quality of the game, though of course could come with a performance hit. I'll be leaving this on low as I don't want to play in clay mode. Effects over here are somewhat important as they can affect your visibility in game, especially if someone's in water, where it's completely shimmery on medium and if you crunch it down, those shimmery effects go away and you may see people easier. On top of that, pushing this up to ultra, you'll notice that bloom and other effects around lights actually show. So of course, having this set to lower options will give you better FPS and better visibility. Foliage is something you should definitely push all the way down to very low to disable all of these far rendering trees and other foliage, allowing you to see better and of course not render in things you don't need. Pushing this all the way up to ultra, you can see trees are rendering to the other side of the island. But pushing it all the way down to very low, there's a distinct lack of trees, which will result in much better FPS with fewer things being rendered at once, especially if you're experiencing FPS drops looking one direction or the other. View distance, of course, while you may think affects the way that you see players, as it says here, it doesn't. So it's a no-brainer to push this all the way down to as low as possible, so if someone's in the distance, you'll spot them a lot easier. Though, of course, the player render distance is not something you can adjust if there is a limit. View distance, crank it all the way down to very low and leave it there. Sharpening at the very bottom is an optional effect, though it will take away some of your performance. I'll leave this off as well as vSync. VSync should only ever be on if you're experiencing screen tearing. Otherwise, if you put this on unnecessarily, you'll experience quite a bit of input latency. Motion blur at the very bottom obviously should be off if you value seeing people and snapping to them while you're looking around quickly, especially in a Twitch shooter. Seeing people blurry could affect how you snap to people and look at people, so set this to disable for the best performance and the best visibility while playing the game. Finally, DirectX version at the very bottom we can change from 11 to 11 enhanced and DirectX 12. DirectX 12 theoretically should give you better performance, though on some graphics cards, especially older ones, you may not get better performance here. For that reason, I won't really be able to tell you what is the best thing you could do here, other than just leaving it on DirectX 11. You're free to try these other options here and see if they give you any kind of difference in performance. And if you do get a difference in performance, do let me know down in the comments below. And remember to include your graphics card so other people can make educated decisions as well. For me, with a 1080 Ti, I'll be leaving this on DirectX 11. Finally, in the bottom right, you'll see save slash load settings. Expand this and click save then confirm. Then your screen should adjust if you change any of the display settings up here and we can continue. The audio tab at the very top offers of course all user preference options. I usually turn off music and HRTF over here is your preference. HRTF is a special effect that allows you to better position people using just audio cues. Having this on should give you better spatial sense but of course it may not be something you like. In which case you can turn it off and you should notice a pretty big difference. On the gameplay tab at the very top, there's only one option here we want to disable, and that's the inventory character render. 
turning this off will turn off the preview that you have of your character on the left side of the screen, but of course will give you much better FPS as it doesn't need to load that model in and unload it whenever you close or open your menu. Click apply and save your settings once again. And with that comes the end of my video. Once again, if you'd like extra performance tips, do check the description down below for links to Windows guides, NVIDIA optimization guides, and other related videos. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technober here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.